loves thanks for returning i hope this video finds you happy and doing well as you know by the thumbnail this video is going to be mistakes that you could be making when removing your makeup so if you're interested then just keep watching all right so before i get into this video i want to get a little housekeeping out of the way my name is bridget and on this channel i do skincare videos makeup related videos with a little bit of lifestyle sprinkled in so if that's your cup of tea please consider subscribing to me i'd love to have you so with all that being said let's go ahead and get into this video so yeah. by the end of the day when it's time to take off your makeup you're tired and you probably want to go ahead take it off really fast using whatever i'm just assuming and truth be told when we do any type of skincare on our face, whether it be removing makeup, morning or nighttime skincare routine, it should be a soothing and relaxing time. So I'm gonna talk about some things that I feel would be a mistake when removing your makeup and I'm gonna talk about why. And I'm gonna talk about tools, product, and techniques, and you all know, it's gonna be some ingredient talk thrown in there somewhere. So the first mistake would be using a Clarisonic. So the use of, or the production of the Clarisonic was DC'd I think two years ago. I didn't see any type of um, specifics on why, but using a brush on our face has been determined to destroy the epidermis. You can mess up your asset mantle, just all types of things when using that type of tool plus you can kind of te be tempted to use it too much it's just a little bit rough on the skin if you're going to be using a technique or a tool over time make sure it's one that's going to improve uh, your skin over time or at bare minimum not make it worse than what it is if you feel as though you absolutely have to use a tool you can use a PMD and I like to use this to apply my serums this is made out of silicone very soft uh, you can barely feel the little grooves right here or bristles on one side and on the other side it's just simply wavy and you can use this for moisturizers or serums and that's what I like to do when applying my serums and of course it's got speed got a speed on it and you could actually use this instead of the Clarisonic when removing your makeup this would actually be better because it won't be damaging to your skin so the second mistake would be the technique. And typically when you're taking off your makeup, you just kind of rip off the eyelashes, take them off, you know, pull them off. You may take a wipe and just get to rubbing, or you could be a little bit aggressive. So the technique would be to use a more gentle approach. Again, over time, this will help eliminate premature wrinkles and sagging. Whatever product that you use, allow it to actually work on the skin if you apply a eye makeup or a facial balm or cleanser allow it to sit on the skin and once it has um, penetrated the skin you can easily rinse it off that's how I like to do when I apply my balms I don't go in with the towel I just go ahead and rinse it off gently in the shower basically you just want to avoid any type of rubbing tugging especially with the eyelashes you always want to be really careful in the eyelash area if you have if you do wear eyelashes don't do you know try not to rip them off even though you may be tempted if you just wear mascara and you get mascara clunks in your eyelashes sometimes you might be tempted to kind of pull at those of course those can yank your lashes out again with whatever product that you're using allow it to penetrate and that way it can effectively remove your makeup and by doing so there will be less rubbing and tugging at the skin. So that's just one thing to make note of. All right, so the third mistake would be using the wrong products. Have you ever noticed that when you go to take off your eye makeup and you um, go to rinse it off or gently pat it away, rub it away, it smudges? Well, you're probably using the wrong type of remover. Or if you've ever gone to clean your face and you notice that after you clean your face, you still have makeup on your face. Well, you're probably using uh, the wrong cleanser. To avoid all of that frustration and immediately get it to work the first time around, 
always use a balm. You can use a balm. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be any type of balm. I have lots of videos. Well, I have two videos on lots of balms up. Um, I'll either list it in the cards or down below. You can use a balm first apply it to your skin again let it sit but before you apply your balm go ahead and remove your lipstick and your eye makeup and i just like to use a elemis uh, makeup remover again you don't have to use this one you can use any one i'll take a cotton pad and place a little bit on there and actually let it set now sometimes i have been known to just kind of cut a little half moon and just set it there under the eye to allow the product to actually penetrate so when i go to rinse it off it immediately comes off i can avoid all of the p tugging and pulling remember you totally want to avoid that then i go in with my cleansing balm and apply it all over let it sit and allow it to penetrate because remember we have to allow these products time to work and then after that I get in the shower and I rinse the makeup off. I don't use a towel. And then I use a cleanser that specifically says that it is a makeup remover. This one is by MD Solar Sciences. And this one says it removes makeup as well as sunscreen. So by using these three different types of items, it can eliminate the frustration and make your makeup removal lickety split it can make it really easy and you can avoid damaging your skin mistake number four is using disposable single-use products and what do i mean by that i'm talking about cotton balls um, not sure if you all know it or not, but a lot of the cheap cotton balls that we get out of Walmart or the convenience store, those are made out of synthetic materials and those are bleached. It has chemicals in it. And here I go with the ingredients. <laughs> That's something that you don't want on your skin. So avoid the little cheapies. If you can find cotton squares like this, Okay, that would be so much better if you like to use those, but ditch the cotton balls. Another thing that you should ditch, and I talk about it frequently, are makeup wipes. And I have used makeup wipes in the past, uh, but I, I have since stopped using those. I talk about that in my get ready with, with me's and things like that. Cotton balls have chemicals in them as well. Plus, when you are using a cotton ball, you are again doing what you're rubbing and tugging at the skin. That's something that you don't want to do. You don't want to uh, use repeated techniques that are going to have our skin wrinkled, drooping, you know, all of that damage. Makeup wipes are just, if you, if you are in a bind, you know, of course, by all means, but to consistently use that technique day in, day out, day in, it's much easier, you know, if, you know, just think about it. If you put a bomb on your face, okay and you have a good one all right and it melts the makeup away that's that's faster than having a wipe wiping 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 wipe and then after you finish wiping you still have makeup on your face so it, it doesn't even do the job properly but using those two items would be a major mistake in my opinion and you know just remember the ingredients what are in the wipes you know those synthetic cotton balls are bleached you know with chemicals and then you put that stuff on your face so that's something not to mention the fact that it has like when you go to use it or whatever it has a little um uh it's almost like it disintegrates but not really you get those little hairs or whatever part of the cotton ball on your face it's just messy and it it's really not quick to me you know when i think about the use of those products it slowed the removal place down and it's just something that should be ditched all right and the fifth mistake which is the last mistake and let's stop forgetting our hairline okay right up hairline and then i want to say the ears you know sometimes when you put your bronzer on your makeup well i know mine my bronzer will some of this part kind of gets you know makeup gets there don't forget that part and don't forget your neck and your um your eyelids if you tight line 
you have that part that you need to be get that you need to get make sure that you get all of those areas those areas if you're not going to if they don't get clean pores get clogged after pores are clogged then we get the bumps you know so just to avoid all of that don't forget those forgotten parts of the face get into that hairline or you can just not bring your makeup all the way to your hairline or all the way right here um, I know that some young ladies will bring their makeup all the way down to their neck if um, you know makeup settles you know during the day so make sure you don't forget about the hairline your air your eyelid uh, your neck and just right here where your ears are trust me they'll love you for it so that's it short and sweet those are five mistakes that you should probably stop let me know if you avoid all of these mistakes or let me know the techniques that you like to use down in the comments i'd love to hear about it thank you so much for tuning in and until my next video smooches